peace, greetings, everybody. Hope you're having a great evening tonight. I have the beautiful and gorgeous Samira from Samira TV. Uh, she's such a pleasant young lady. She's going to come over. She's going to tell us about her experience going to Kenya, uh, attempting to get land, what was going on with her, and JT, the bigger figure. So everybody, let's have a warm welcome for the beautiful and gorgeous Samira. Hi, Samira. Greetings, greetings. It's a pleasure to have you here with that beautiful smile. Thank you. And I know you're busy with the children, being a mother, so I appreciate you uh, taking some time to come over and talk to us so that people can find out what's going on in Africa and what your experience was like. No problem. You know, I, I wouldn't do this for anybody else but you on this platform. Uh, so I just want to thank you. And uh, it's been quite an experience. You know, the last time we talked, I really wanted to dive into this, you know, but I thought that I was supposed to be doing an interview with, um, you know, uh, the YouTuber Tasha K. Right. Yeah, we were supposed to do an interview, but um, I don't know what happened with that. So, you know. But we're going to get all of the details here because my subscribers have been watching that whole thing with uh, with JT, the bigger figure, when he was in Burkino. And uh, then the next thing you know, he was in Kenya. And so I got you over here so you can explain to them what was going on, all the details on what that was like. And so let's uh, start with first, uh, when did you first decide or become interested in even going to Africa to live? Well, it's always that's always been a dream of mine. I've always had connections to going to Africa. Um, so that, that's, that's been forever. Um, when I felt like it could really be a reality was probably during the time of the pandemic. And, um, you know, everybody was, you know, uncertain about what was going on in the world. And, I just really felt like compelled that, okay, this is the time my husband had introduced me to JT's platform. And so um, I seen that he had his family there. I seen that, you know, he had support. And, you know, I just, out of support of my husband and, you know, my dream. I just felt like, you know, hey, maybe this is the opportunity. Okay. I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm going to let you tell the whole story, okay? So go from the beginning on, you know, making arrangements, getting over there. Tell us the whole story with no interruptions. You got the floor, Queen. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm like a very, uh, even though I express myself through music and dance, I'm a naturally shy person. So this is really hard for me because never, I always knew that you and I would connect, but I didn't think it was going to be because of this. Um, and, you know, here lately, he's been on his channel. He's been talking about me, talking about the situation. And he's basically making it seem like, I'm clout chasing at this point. Okay, I'm going to make one interruption. We're not connected because of this. I I became close to you because of your music. Yeah. So true. the music is what caught my attention because that's the first thing you sent me was your music video. Yes. Okay, so, right. you know, you're a musician. I'm into music. You yes. Know what I'm saying? And you're a sister and I'm a brother and we're from the same tribe. So yeah. that, But then I found out this, so now that's why I'm interested. So go ahead. Yeah. And so, and that's real, you know what I'm saying? And JT, he's into music. He's a producer. Mm -hmm. So, um, basically, my husband had introduced me to the channel. I seen him and his wife, the children, over in Africa. Looked like they was making big moves. And so, I was like, you know, it'd be cool if we team up with another couple. And um, 
try to live out our dreams along with them and, and help build a bridge between here and Africa. And so end up uh, getting in touch with uh, JT and his wife. Um, I end up, um, at the time, my husband was not working. So um, I literally had, was like going off of a dollar in a dream and invested into this land. Mm -hmm. Initially, uh, JT had put me in contact with his wife. Uh, I think they call her Tisha Boo. And we was corresponding. We talked. She told me, you know, how much the land was. And uh, the deal was, the deal was I paid $1,000 for a thousand square feet land. And also, um, I was supposed to have some shares in Trap Flicks as well, which is JT's app. Uh, that he has going on. And so it was a heck of a deal. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm corresponding back and forth with her. Um, then um, me and my husband decided, uh, once he started working and stuff, you know, he uh, decided that maybe it would be a good thing for me to go on over there and look, into, look at the land and to do the business part of it as far as putting the land into my name and things of that matter. So um, I was like, okay, cool. I'm currently in school. And so I took the time that I had a break between the winter break, between like Christmas and New Year's to go to Africa. And that was like 2022, 2023, recent, like within the last three months. I just came back from Africa. It's my first time traveling abroad, first time ever getting a passport. So that shows you how serious I was about this. Um, so after I made the transaction, I sent the money. Um, a few months later, I get in touch with JT. I'm like, hey, I'm... Um, I'm coming to Africa. I want to see what I purchased and do the business part of it. So he's like, cool. Um, and the first initial red flag was the fact that he really didn't want to correspond with my husband. He just wanted to deal with me. So he was like, you purchased the land. The land is in your name. Um, so we'll just do it like that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. My husband was cool with it. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I ended up working on getting my room and board for when I was going to be there. And I asked him about that. He was like, you know, I have an apartment. You can stay there. Uh, the apartment was supposed to be 300 a month. However, he was charging me double the rent. So I'm like, whatever, that's cool. $600. And I was going to be staying there for a month anyway, for 30 days. So I'm like, okay. So I sent him the money for the apartment. Um, he's telling me he's got a driver set up for me. When I get there, everything's going to be cool. I was going to be um, staying close to where he was residing at. And so everything's set up. So, um, when I was in the process of getting my my e visa, my visa, um, he connected me with a lawyer, and there was some complications right there initially as far as getting that approved. I really don't know what was going on with that, but at the last minute, we ended up getting it approved, and so that was that. So. Before leaving out, I, I text JT. We was corresponding via WhatsApp. And I told him, hey, this is my itinerary. I sent my flight information. Let him know when I was going to be there, how long I was staying. So he knew everything. Everything was on the table. You know, and then on another note, 
you know, I'm letting him know. I'm being honest with him. I'm like, you know, this is an opportunity, bro, for you to really gain a sister and a brother. It's an opportunity for us to, as black people, to do good business with one another. Like, you know, we, we could like really, really do big things. And so I'm just being transparent, being honest. I let him know I do music, all that good stuff. So when I get there to the airport, I called Mr. JT, he did not answer. So I'm like, okay, this is weird because he knows my whole itinerary. He knows my flight schedule. So I don't understand why he's not answering. So I call him a few times. He's not answering. So I'm like, okay, let me call the lawyer because I hadn't paid the lawyer yet. So I knew that he would have an incentive to answer the phone. So I call him. Uh, I don't think he answered the first time. And then he ended up answering. And then he's like, I'm like, hey, JT's not answering. I really don't know what to do. I'm here. I'm at the airport. You know, what's up? And so he was like, um, I'll send a driver to you. Uh, they'll bring you to where I am. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the driver comes, picks me up from the airport. And now, mind you, during the time that I'm at the airport, I kind of just break down a little bit because this is my first time traveling outside of the country. And I'm just like, man, this is some BS. Like, I'm here and my peoples, they're not answering the phone. So uh, I kind of break down at the airport. It was some really nice ladies at the airport. They was, like, assuring me that everything was going to be okay, whatever, however they could assist me that they would. And so I was like, okay. Um, now, right before I went, I have found out that my ancestry, my DNA tracks back to Kenya. So that was even more of an incentive for me to want to go to Kenya, mm -hmm. the cradle of civilization. And the driver comes to get me, brings, takes me to the lawyer. The lawyer, um, we connect. He keeps trying to call JT. JT's not answering. So he's like, okay. He's like, I'm going to... Um, Let's just get you a room. We'll keep reaching out to JT, but let's just get you some shelter. Let's just secure that. So I'm like, okay. So we go to a hotel that I guess was kind of near the vicinity of where JT was staying. And um, he, I get settled in my hotel room. Now, finally, JT answers the phone. I think we were about to check in. Excuse me. And JT's like <clears throat> talking to the lawyer. And he's saying um, he's going to pay for the room for tonight. I can get the the apartment the following day. And that um, everything was good. So I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. He answered the phone. He's going to pay for the room. Whatever. Tomorrow's a new day. Um, the, so the lawyer tells me to call JT before he gave me a, a certain time to call him before check out. And he said, um, JT will make the arrangements for me to get to the apartment right. that I had rented. So I called JT that morning. Of course, he did not answer the phone, kept calling him. He didn't answer. So I did. The only other thing I knew to do <clears throat> was to call the lawyer. The lawyer answers the phone. He comes to the, he catches the ride to the hotel. And um, at this point, he's calling JT. JT's not answering. And so basically we're sitting in the lobby of the hotel with all my suitcases and just trying to figure out, you know, what to do. Mm -hmm. So we ended up leaving my belongings at the with the clerk at the front of the desk at the hotel. We asked her to watch it for a little bit. 
and he was like, we're going to take a walk. We're going to walk to a JT, to where JT's studio is or where he would be recording at. It's not too far from here. So we walked to the studio and the people there, they're like, you know, they haven't seen, they haven't talked to JT or whatever. And so after that, I think the lawyer had gotten in touch with JT's housekeeper. And she was like, oh, I'm sitting in front of JT's house. I'm waiting on him to wake up or get up um, so I can go and clean the apartment. So I'm like, okay. So he was like, okay, well, since she's there at, ho at, at JT's uh, apartment, we're just going to go over there. And that way you can bring all your stuff. And um, we'll just, he said, I'll just uh I'll just take you to her so, you know, you can be there when he gets up. So we get there, catch a ride to the hotel. I mean, to the, from the hotel to JT's apartment, the housekeeper, her name is Jane. She was sitting outside of JT's apartment and she was like, I'm just waiting on him to wake up. So, I think finally um, JT called or she called and he answered the phone. We go upstairs and JT kind of like just peek his head out the door. He was like, hey, um, he was like, I apologize. I'm just now getting in the shower or getting out the shower or something. Um, here's the keys. He gave the keys to the housekeeper. He was like, take her on over there. And... Um, Make sure she gets settled. So I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. At least I laid eyes on him. Whatever. So we go to the apartment. And the apartment is just... I mean, the apartment itself was decent. But the conditions of the apartment was just dusty. It was dirty. Um... It was some of, like, you could tell it was children that had been there because it was toys and stuff um, everywhere. Um, it's just, like, wasn't presentable. It really wasn't. For me to have paid my money to be there, the least they could have did was make sure that it was clean. I, I don't care what it was. As long as it was clean, I would have been cool with that because I didn't know what to expect anyway coming from America to Africa for the first time. But I know that that apartment was dirty and it wasn't clean. And um, so she's like, I don't, she's like, I don't know why he's just now giving me the keys. I could have been had this apartment ready for you, cleaned up for you. I apologize. She's apologizing. I'm like, you know, it's not your fault. So it was a dirty sheet on the floor, you know what I'm saying? She picked up the sheet off the floor, put it on the bed. Um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, I, I don't want to go off because I don't want to seem like I'm an entitled, spoiled American. So I'm just like, I'm just going to humble myself right now and just be cool. So she put the dirty sheet on the bed. Uh, she's trying to spot clean a little bit and, you know, I'm just like, I'm just like, this is not a good sign. Um, I didn't have a blanket for the bed. And so she went and got a blanket and bought the blanket back. And the blanket smells so bad. Mm. Like, I just, like, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, she didn't smell that blanket. I don't know where the blanket came from. Um, but it had a real foul odor to it. And, you know, admit, like, I'm trying to stay positive. But, you know, in my mind, I'm like, you know, is she, like, is this, is something going on between, like, her and JT? Is she trying to, like, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Because I'm like woman to woman, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't move like this. Um, but I'm just like trying to stay positive. 
I'm like, it's not her fault. She's trying to do the best that she can. But it's just like, for me, it was just like a kind of eerie feeling right there. So I'm like, okay. So let's see. After that, um, she stays there for a while. I just go. I just lay down because I'm tired at this point. And... I had put the blanket, like she had put the blanket on the bed. I, I threw the blanket in the closet. And um, when I went to sleep on the bed, she ended up putting that blanket on top of me. And I'm just like, oh, man. So um, there was an issue with the internet. Um, some The internet box was broke or something like that. And... I'm like, okay, how much does it cost for an internet box? She was like, well, she was like, um, I don't know. It was like $20, $30 or something. She was like, I apologize. She was like, JT's children broke the internet box while they was here. So I'm like, okay. So mind you, I'm already like paying unnecessary money. You know, I'm, I'm paying to, to get from the hotel to the room, I mean, to the apartment, um, you know, I'm, I'm already just, I'm paying for the internet thing, stuff that I shouldn't have to pay for. So I'm like, that's cool. I got children. I know how it goes, whatever. So I pay for it. Um, so what happened? So after that, um, trying to figure out what happened the next day i have every all the correspondence on this phone right here but i'm just trying to solely go off of memory so the next day um i'm just like cool you know what i'm saying i'm not really gonna press him today i'm just gonna sightsee whatever do my thing so in Africa, there's a thing where the power goes out. And it goes out, like, I guess in certain spots or whatever. Now, mind you, JT's apartment is directly across the street from me. He lives, like, in an apartment, condo, complex or whatever that's directly, like, across the street. The only thing that really separates us, because if I go on the balcony... I could see where he lives at and there's like a grassy, some land there that kind of like a empty lot of land that separates us. So basically if I'm on the balcony, I could see where he lives at. And um, I think a week goes by um, still no, I still haven't met JT outside of that first initial time that he comes to the door. Um, still no talk of how I can see the land um, or any of that. Now, JT had connected me with his driver. Uh, his name is Philip, And pretty much Philip was taking me wherever I wanted to go. Now, one thing about Africa or Kenya is that, and I don't know if it's like this in other countries, but as soon as you open your mouth, if they know that you're not from there, you're going to get taxed, period. What they would normally charge each other, they're not going to charge you that. And so, I mean, it was so bad to where, like, I would, like, tell the driver to, like, pretty much talk. Like, I, when we would go places, I was like, I'm not going to say anything. You just talk. Um, but it was just really hard, you know. And not only that, he was taxing me. He was over overcharging me. Um, matter of fact, I had paid his wife, like, a lot of money for a while I was there to cook for me so I don't have to eat out all the time. And whenever he would come in town, he would... Um, 
he could bring me the food. Um, she mm-hmm. only gave me like two meals. <laughs> and I paid her a lot of money. And, um, you know, it was just like, at this point, I don't know if JT was like, you know, run it up <laughs> with her. Like, she got money. You can run it up or whatever. Y'all get her money from her. I don't know if he threw them on me to take care of his people. But it is, at this point, it was just like pretty much I was taking care of his people. Um, I think I had even gave the housekeeper some uh, money, um, even though the house was a wreck when I got there. But I'm just looking at my circumstance, even though I'm not rich, I don't have a lot of money. I know that we are probably a little bit more privileged over here than they are over there. So I'm just trying to keep that in mind, keep a humble spirit. And almost a week passed by and I, you know, like a few days, almost closer to a week. And I, and I called JT and I was like, look, Brian, I was like, this apartment is dirty. The blanket stinks. It's nasty. Like, you need to really clean this apartment. It's not my job to come here to clean when I've already paid to stay here. So you're going to have to do something. So he was like, I apologize. He's like, I didn't know. Whatever. So he had a driver call me. He was like, hey, this is JT's driver. This is a different driver. He was like, I'm going to bring you a blanket. And I was like, okay. Now, at the time, because I had met a young lady that worked for the United Nations on the airplane to go to Kenya. And we, I had told her that was my first time traveling there. And she was like, "I'm a, a, let's exchange numbers. You know, keep, keep me posted on what's going on. I, I had told her that I wanted to interview her. So at the time, I was at a location interviewing this young lady. And so this driver that JT had to call me was being really rude. Like, you know, I'm here at the apartment and, you know, and I'm thinking like, first of all, JT, you know, I understand you're trying to do the right thing by having him bring me a clean blanket or a new blanket or whatever, but you didn't even ask if I was out and about what was going on, you just automatically sent this man over to where I was staying at. And this guy, he's being really rude to me. Like, I owe him an explanation to, you know, what I'm doing and where I'm at and all this kind of stuff. So, anyways, I'm like, you know, I had to kind of get a little aggressive with him. I'm like, look, bro, I was like, I'll call you when I'm done. When I'm done, if it's not too late, you can bring the blanket. But I will call you. You don't have to keep calling me. So on my way to the apartment, when I was done, I ended up calling him. Like, hey, I'm on my way. You can meet me there. And so when I get there, um, he ends up pulling up right after the driver who had dropped me off left. And he's like, where where you been? And I'm like, first of all, that's none of your business. I don't even know you. All you're supposed to be doing is dropping me off a blanket. You asking too many questions. And he was like, I've been waiting on you and all this. I was like, well, that's between you and JT. And so he was like, well, you owe me some money um, for my gas or something. And I'm like, you know, I, right now I don't have it. Uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to go and, you know, exchange some money. So I can pay you tomorrow, but I don't I don't have any money to give you. And I didn't know I was supposed to give you any money. So he was like, okay, I'll be here tomorrow for my money and whatever. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So I take the blanket because at this point, I've been sleeping without a blanket and it's been really cold at nighttime. So I take the blanket, I go upstairs, I lay down, 
Um, so, um, now mind you, while I'm there, I ended up um, sending JT some of my music. I'm like, hey, I'm an artist, you know, because in my mind, I'm like, okay, he's a producer. He's got a studio here in Africa. Really, I wanted to, um, outside of seeing the land and establishing that, I wanted to work with some of the artists in Kenya. I, I didn't necessarily want to do a song with JT. He could have produced it, but really I was more looking forward to doing music with the artist in Kenya because I had seen that he was working with some artists there. And um, so I sent him some music, so he really didn't say much about the music. Um, so, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, what's up with the land? I want to go see the land, you know, what's going on with that? Um, now mind you, while I'm there, um, JT is sending men in and out of the apartment. I don't know what was going on. You know, he was making it seem like, um, you know, his children were coming back because I don't, I think his children had went back to America. So I think that his children were coming back and they were going to be staying at that apartment or they were moving. Some stuff was going on, but JT just kept having these men come back and forth, back and forth. And uh, they're moving stuff, getting safes, um, all kind of stuff. JT wants me to put him on video while they're getting the stuff, moving the stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is a little suspect. So I'm asking JT about the land. He's telling me that the people in McQuainy County, where the land is, are moving funny. And I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, hell, what difference does it make the people hear that you got around me I'm moving funny <laughs> you know what I'm saying like let me just see my land mm -hmm. and so um so I, I I started talking to my husband I'm like hey I don't really feel right about this um you know JT is now saying that the people in McQuainy County are moving funny and um you know he's glad that I'm there because his people are moving funny even in Kenya he's about to get a whole new team and you know I'm like I didn't sign up for all this all I wanted to do was come and secure the land and possibly work on some music while I'm here um so my husband's like you know maybe we should you know listen to JT or whatever and go with a different location and just be patient and invest somewhere else outside of McQueen County. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to um, be cooperative and um, just keep an open mind. But I don't know for me if something just don't sit right like I have to I have to say something I have to voice that and so the Campbell um what really like just got me to be like okay enough is enough <laughs> is that the electricity had went out and I was thinking that the electricity all in the vicinity of where I was, was out. So I had went to sleep, um, woke up the next morning, the electricity was still out and come to find out that JT didn't put any money on the electric bill. Um, so I don't know if there's like a prepaid type of thing with the utilities there. Um, however, I think this was like the second time that it had happened, but this time I thought that, you know, it was the electricity was just out everywhere again, like it had happened a few times before. 
And uh, when I came to realize that that wasn't the case, that it was just that JT had not been paying the electric bill, boom, I kind of went off. <laughs> and uh, I sent uh, JT some messages, some voice messages via WhatsApp. And I'm just like, you know, the way you treating me, you know what I'm saying? This is disrespectful. This is not cool. I wouldn't treat a dog the way you treated me. Like, you know, and you haven't gave me a face to face. You got these men coming in and out of the house. You know, I'm here by myself. And there's just like, you know, you're not treating me right. This is not cool. So he gets mad. He sent me a message like, bitch, uh, my wife don't even talk to me the way you talking to me. And uh, you can get out of my apartment. And I mean, he's just like, you know, pretty much going off because I kind of got a little feisty with him. And um, after that, it just kind of went just real downhill uh, my husband tried to call him and was like look you know my wife might be pregnant uh her hormones are, are all over the place like just be a little bit more patient with her i get her to apologize my husband's like trying to keep the peace because <clears throat> at the end of the day i'm all the way in africa so he's trying to just kind of like keep everything cool right so he calls me and he's like kyle JT, he's apologized. He's waiting on your call. So I called JT. JT didn't answer. JT sent me a message and said, I'm eating right now. I call you when I'm done. All right, cool. He never called me. Um, so that was that. So then I pretty much just took it upon myself to make arrangements to go to the land without JT involvement. Got in touch with the chief of the land. Um, I secured the driver and I just went on and went to the land. When I got there, um, I ended up meeting with the chief personally and I ended up doing a, a music video while I was there on the land. And that was for, you know, for my artistry, but for documentation as well. Mm -hmm. And um, had, I ended up getting some videographers from Kenya that have uh, worked with JT before. And from my understanding, what they told me is that JT does not do good business. Uh, JT pretty much use people and then just throw them away uh, once he realized that he don't need them and that basically he didn't treat them right. And um, they pretty much had reached out to me to help me do a video once they found out that I was into music and stuff. And they just pretty much you know, told me how they felt about JT. Shout out to Mafia Productions and shout out to Justin from Kenya. Um, I'm like, okay. So now everybody's like kind of really like talking because they seeing how he's treating me and they don't agree with it. So, you know, the driver's talking, telling me, you know, the same thing. Uh, the, the video people, they're telling me the same thing. When I get there, the chief was like, I don't understand why he didn't personally escort you here to the land. He said, that don't make sense. Why would he just leave it to you to make a way to get here and you're invested with him? That doesn't make sense. So, um, you know, I'm like, I don't know, but I'm here. And um, so after that, we wrap it up, whatever. I'm on my way back home. 
I get to the apartment and I get a call and it's from that driver that was rude to me that brought me the blanket. Now, mind you, at this time, it's like probably 11 o'clock at night. Mm. And he's like, I'm downstairs. I'm on my way up there. I'm about to come and get some stuff JT needs from the apartment. And I'm like, well, I, I said, I said, I have not talked to JT. And I said, do you know what time it is? And I was like, you know, this is like inappropriate for you to be calling at this time. Plus, I, JT hasn't given me a heads up that you were coming over here. So uh, I text JT. I'm like, hey, you know, such and such is here. You know, do you know about this? He's supposed to be coming and get some stuff. So he's just like, yeah, or whatever. But for me, I took it a different way because here I am as a single woman stand in your apartment and you don't have enough decency to ask me if it's okay for somebody to come over here at 11 o'clock at night and you just sent somebody over here that I've already told you that I didn't feel comfortable with. So for me, I know he was probably watching my YouTube, watching my content. He knew that I had went to that land and it's like he sent him purposely over there to try to intimidate me. So, um, he comes to the apartment. Um, he's getting the stuff or whatever. Now, mind you, okay, so I had to go and let him in because that's just how the complex was set up. So I had to go downstairs and let him in, rode the elevator. My husband's on the phone at this time. And my husband's like, hey, peace, King. You know, hope all is well. You know, he's just, you know, just trying to keep still keep it peaceful. And so um, he asked me a question. I can't remember what it was, but it was something along the lines like, where you been or something. And this time my husband's on the phone and he hears him. And he was like, my husband just goes off. He was like, that's none of your business, bro. You being disrespectful. My husband just like goes all the way off. And so to the point to where he was acting like he was scared to come into the apartment to get what he needed. Um, but, you know, my husband's like, you know, just going off on the phone. And so JT, I think my husband ends up, after the dude left, my husband ends up calling JT. I think they get into it. And he's like, I'll be over there at 10 o'clock in the morning. Tell your wife to have her stuff packed. She's got to get out of my house. Y'all being disrespectful or what have you. So, um, while I was there, I had met a nice um, lady from St. Rita Catholic Church. And I called her that night and I was like, hey, I was like, you know, I, I think I might be getting put out. Do you have somewhere for me to stay? I don't feel comfortable here. And the plan was for me to meet her that next morning at her church. So I end up leaving to go meet with her. And while I was there, the driver was there, Philip, the one that drove me to the church. And then the land manager, his name was Daniel. He ended up meeting me up there at the church. And, you know, he's just basically saying that, um, um, there was like several people that's complaining about JT doing bad business with the land. It's actually ancestral land. Um, nobody's going to be able to really put the land in their name. He's heard that the land has been way oversold. And he ended up uh, putting me on the phone with JT's lawyer. Um, I want to say... 
at the time she was his ex lawyer. I don't really know. Um, she gets on the phone. She basically says that JT is pretty much in the process of a RICO case and that they, him and his wife together have scammed over 2,000 people and that uh, they was operating basically under fraudulence and that they were scamming people. And she said that uh, Tish, JT's wife, was the mastermind um, she said that, you know, she did a lot of talking about JT's wife, more about JT's wife than JT and almost like a woman that was scorned and, um, you know, she was saying that, uh, Tisha was holding people at gunpoint. She was really dangerous all this kind of stuff that they was pretty much caught up in a Rico case. So, uh, after, uh, so I'm sitting there at the church and JT's like, Hey, he texts me. He's like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go. Oh, I got some people coming to the apartment. They need to get some stuff or whatever. And I'm like, Oh uh, no, you don't because I'm not at the apartment and I don't feel comfortable with nobody being there, especially with not me being there and all my stuff is at the apartment. So then he's like, lady, you got to get the hell out of my apartment. You know, he's like going off again. So I end up leaving the church. I go to the apartment. When I get there, the security at the apartment, uh, because usually I have my little key or whatever, they see my face. They was told by JT that I was his sister and for them to make sure that I was good. Well, this particular time when I get there, this is two weeks um, of me being there. They meet me at the gate security. There's probably about... Uh, I don't know, like seven to eight uh, men out there on um, motorcycles, and you know, and I'm just like, it's it's looking really strange and suspect. So they come to me where uh, where I was with the driver, and they're like, "Ma'am, we can't let you in. We've been given by order of JT to not let you in. He wants you out of his apartment." I'm like, "Wow, mind you, it's nighttime. It's raining." And, you know, I might be pregnant. <laughs> and he sent all these goons there to do, I don't know what. Um, but the security at the apartment uh, complex, they were so, like, they didn't really know what was going on. And I'm like, sir, I'm not leaving here without my stuff. All of my stuff is in the apartment. Y'all want to just put me out and not let me get my stuff? I'm not leaving like that. I'm like, you need to call JT and let him know that I'm not leaving without my stuff. So he gets JT on the phone. So he was like, um, first he was like, no, she just needs to leave or whatever. And then he was like, okay, she can get her stuff, but y'all need to escort her up there. Y'all need to make sure she don't steal nothing. Um, and I need pictures of all of her stuff that she's taking with her. So I goes up there. So at this time, I'm just like, I just break down. Like, I'm just crying. And the security, he's like, ma'am, he's like, I apologize, man. He said, I, I don't, I don't even want to put you out. He said, I don't even feel right doing this. It don't make no sense. How did he go from you, his sister, to make sure that nothing happened to you, to putting you out in the middle of the night in the rain? He was like, this just don't make any sense. And I, I'm just crying. I'm not even saying that. I'm just getting my stuff. You know, he's like making it seem like I'm a thief and all this kind of stuff. So I'm just packing up, packing up my stuff. And now, mind you, when, when the dude come in the room where I was staying at, there's a Bible <laughs> sitting in the middle of the bed from where I had been reading. Like, 
it was just like, I mean, at that point, Pharaoh, I'm not going to lie. I kind of felt like I was about to have a nervous breakdown. And um, I'm packing up my stuff. I take a picture of my stuff. I send it to JT. And I end up turning the keys and I left. And I went, I left straight from there and I went to the police station. Get to the police station. The driver takes me. He was nice enough to stay with me. He was nice enough to translate whatever I was at, whatever, you know, miscommunication that there might have been. And um, it was an officer but not by the name of Willie. He was really professional. Uh, he was nice enough to take my report and like really uh, listen to my testimony. And um, he took all the evidence as far as the certificates that JT had sent me for the land, for trap flicks, all that. And so basically he was saying that the land was sold under fraudulence and he illegally evicted me. So that was reason for him to be arrested. So I'm like, okay. So I got my case number. Um, I was supposed to, I was told to call them to the next day. Um, and the driver took me to a hotel and I ended up paying to stay at a hotel. The next day I called officer Willie and we ended up meeting up with him. And, um, I had called the U S, um, the embassy as well. And. Uh, they had sent me some lawyer information, but they said the best thing that I could have done was went to the police station and go from there. So they basically were saying that they were going to have to pretty much go and get JT. Um, he wasn't really being cooperative, so they were just going to have to get him and try to bring him in that way. They asked me if I would be interested in doing a ride along. Um, I said yes. And we ended up going on a ride along. Um, people in JT's camp at this time, um, even the driver that was being rude to me, I think he's the one that brought him down. <laughs> but they was all cooperating to bring JT down. Um, we ended up finally capturing JT and we ended up uh, going to the police station and that was my first time being able to have a sit down with JT was at the police station. Mm -hmm. That was after two weeks of being there. Uh, he told me that uh, he didn't at the police station, he said he didn't want to do a face to face with me or sit down with me because he felt like it was inappropriate being that he was married and that I was married. But for me, that didn't make any sense because for one, y'all took my money. That wasn't inappropriate. For two, you're meeting up with the housekeepers. You meeting up, are you doing business with other women? So why wouldn't you even if you had to have your wife on FaceTime and I had my husband on FaceTime, that didn't, that didn't make sense of why you wouldn't want to do business with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, you know, one thing about me, I, I, I'm an honest person. So I like to put everything on the table and, you know, I, at the, when I was there, I was honest with JT I told him something that I had did some infidelity in my relationship with my husband. And my husband knows that I told him this. 
I told JT I was going to talk about this on my platform one day. Um, and he's tried to use that against me. The only reason why I told him that, Mr. Farrow, is that when I was doing the pandemic, um, I was going through therapy for the very first time in my life, dealing with some issues that I had never dealt with before. And on his channel, he was being transparent, talking about infidelity with his wife and how, you know, um, important and how hard it is to rebuild trust and all this and that. And one thing about me is that I don't have a problem with telling my truth because I, I'm not perfect. And can't nobody tell my truth like I can tell my truth. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather tell my truth. And he's been using that against me to make it seem like maybe I was trying to press up on him. Maybe I was, um, you know, like I wanted him or something. Mm -hmm. So he took my honesty and used it against me. Mm -hmm. Saying that I was pregnant and that the baby possibly wasn't my husband's. Mm. and all this kind of stuff he's been just slandering my name and um i don't know if i've ever felt this disrespected in my life to be honest but back to the police station that was my first time ever getting a one-on-one -on -one with jt he said he didn't want to do a one-on-one -on -one with me or face-to-face -to -face because out of respect of his wife and my husband, even though my husband had no problem with us meeting, talking about business, getting that land transferred in my name, which come to find out that wasn't even, um, couldn't even do that. So um, in the politics in Africa, you know what I'm saying? Everybody want their money. So everything that I was doing, everything that was taking place, it cost money. I had to pay. Um, so JT, he's like, um, you know, we talking, we're trying to uh, pretty much come up with a compromise as far as how we can work things out. And the lawyer was there that got me the e visa his name is alex so he's trying to write up stuff so jt's like you know i'll give you more land um all kind of stuff i got stuff written down i got documentation of everything and um pretty much when we came up with um some type of compromise the police officers at the station, they wasn't comfortable with it. They said, no, this ain't gonna go because nothing is pretty much uh, stamped or certified. It's mm -hmm. just written out and we don't trust this. Mm -hmm. So JT thought he was going home, but they ended up locking him up. He had to stay overnight. Mm -hmm. The next morning, JT's blowing my phone up saying, I need you to come down here we need to figure this out because this is the only way I'll be able to get out of jail. Mm. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll get there when I get there. I'm not trying to rush for you, you know, but he keeps like saying, keeps sending me messages saying, you know, hey, I really need you to get here. You know, I, I want to get out of here or whatever. So, I get there uh, to the police station. And by this time, you know, I'm just like, okay, I just want my money back. That's it. Um, so JT is scrambling, trying to get people to send him money so he can send me my money back. Now, mind you, it's only $1,600. Um, at this time, his cousin had flew in. Uh, I think his name was Cuz Cuddy. And he was at the police station. And even him, he was being very disrespectful. 
towards me. Uh, he's sitting at the police station talking to the female guards. And, and the female guards, they was being disrespectful too because they like, why would somebody purchase land and, you know, not uh, not know what they're purchasing and all this kind of stuff. And he's talking about how American women ain't nothing and uh, he's sick of American women and African women are way better and all this. And I, he knows I'm there as just as black American as I can be. And uh, he's having this conversation with them. And uh, meanwhile, JT's on the phone trying to call people, seeing how he can get this money. And so there was an issue, like, when you go to Africa, you have to get another SIM chip so you can be on the same phone way with them or whatever. And so I had switched my SIM chip um, and there was an issue with my bank. So JT was sending the money on his end and it was showing a receipt on his end. However, my bank had flagged it as, as something as fraudulent. So it wasn't really trying to let me receive any money at the time. So they pretty much took his word, took his receipts or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, they like, you know, you have to work it out with your bank, but he sent the money. We can see the receipt. So I'm like, okay. So, um, you know, um, I mean, basically that's that, um, he, you know, the lawyer Mercy, that was his lawyer, uh, she's, she starts calling me, um, when we was at the church, she said that she would be willing to be my lawyer, but when I tried to call her, she wouldn't answer. So finally we made connection and she's, you know, steady talking about JT and, you know, like borderline kind of being a little unprofessional because she starts sending me messages between her and JT where he's talking about me. And I'm like, why would you as a lawyer be sending me these messages about him talking about me? That's like unprofessional. I don't get it. <laughs> But the word on the streets, what they were saying is that there was something going on between him and that lawyer that might not have been all the way professional. Um, so me and her ended up kind of like, you know, getting into it. And um, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. Like, you know, no professionalism. Um, everybody was moving real funny, um, except for the lady I met at the church and her, the church members, and then um, Officer Willie. Everybody else, you know, I, and I appreciate uh, Chief Dominique, but it was a good experience for me to be able to travel abroad and fulfill my dreams as far as going to Africa to experience that. But all the BS, everything that I went through while I was there, it was a very traumatic experience. So excuse me if everything is just not flowing off the top, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still traumatized from everything that I had to experience there. And just uh, being, you know, the aftermath, being back here in America, um, Everything, like, you know, people are saying on that internet, JT's, like, putting my name out there, like, you know, I'm this dirty person that I wanted him, that I was trying to push up on him, that my baby might not be my husband's, you know, just taking my truth and turning it against me, and, you know, I'm just, like, over it, like, really, like, you know, making it seem like I'm trying to clout chase when he's putting my picture on his page and outside of doing an interview with you 
And I did one other interview with uh, somebody had, that had been victimized by JT that had went to Africa after me that he owes money. Um, you, you, you guys are the only people that I've talked to about this. I don't even like have, I'm not even like really putting videos on my page about JT because I don't even want to be connected to him in any way. Now, let me ask you something. How much did your plane ticket cost round trip to Africa and back? 1500 1500 And how much do you think you spent on goods and, you know, stuff for your luggage or whatever you're going to take to go? How much do you think you spent preparing to go on your own personal items? Probably about... Probably about another five hundred. Okay, now how much did you give him? Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. And how much do you estimate you spent where you couldn't contact him, having to pay people to run around and cook food and all that? How much do you think you spent? Ride along and all that shit. That was probably about seven thousand. Seven thousand. Maybe five to seven thousand, yeah, somewhere between there. I'll say six thousand. So you spent six thousand there that he could have helped you not spend. Well, we're looking at six, seven, eight, nine. We're looking at almost ten thousand dollars gone. Now, from what I hear. It's me. I go to Africa. I tell you I'm coming to Africa on my itinerary. You're supposed to call me. He was supposed to be calling you, knowing that you're coming to a foreign country where he's already at. Why would you have to keep calling him? So right off of there, he's filed. Me, it's smoke right there. If I would have went all the way to Africa and I kept calling him and he didn't call me back, it's smoke as soon as I see him, right off the top. It's going, it's up. He got to run me my bread. He got to run me all my expenses right then. Yeah. Because right there, it shows a lack of respect because he's supposed to be a good host. And that's all I said about it. I got a lot I can say about it. Yeah. I, never, I never trusted him in the whole back to Africa situation. I didn't like the fact that he talked to a bunch of black Americans to go to Burkino. Mm -hmm. By the time they get there, now you're in Kenya. Mm hmm so what are they supposed to do? They came there because you're there. Now you're not there no more. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get down on him like I could. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's worth it. He don't want these problems. Like, <laughs> this is a whole, <laughs> I'm in Chicago. He doesn't want these problems. I just don't want to put him in the mix. Okay? Yeah. It's not about me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is a horrible, horrible situation. I'm glad you made it through it. You're about to have a baby, so stay on a positive, happy vibe. I'm glad you could share this with everybody. And I wanted them to hear this so they could know that the back to Africa, a lot of it is a scam. Uh, when you get there and you're American, all they see is money. Yeah. They look at you as a walking piggy bank. It's a lot of tribalism there, and so you're never, you're not really a brother or a sister. You're uh, walking piggy bank. Mm -hmm. So, I'm glad you made it through that. You're very brave, and your story is going to save a lot of people a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, waste of money to send it to him. Uh, I'm telling people you cannot buy land in Africa. Mm -hmm. Land in Africa is ancestral land owned by tribes and you cannot buy my side land dogon land amara land aroma land whatever tribes they got in kenya you cannot own their land the chief might let you lease it right but you cannot own land and so if you lease land for 50 years and you go there and you set up your family by the time your children get 40 or 50 they'll have to move Mm -hmm. What's the advantage of getting land that you can't pass to your children? Exactly. So 
it could be a good thing. You should tell your story as many times as possible. Avoid contact with them. You're pregnant right now. Don't watch anything concerning him right now. Don't, don't watch anything he says about you. Don't look at it. Don't pay it any attention. Because if a tree falls in the forest, does it make any noise? So let him make noise, just you don't hear it because you don't need to pick up his negative energy about you. Just block it, block him out your world. Whatever he says, don't you pay no attention to it because you're pregnant right now. Let him say whatever because it's not going to benefit you to listen to him. He's trying to protect his own self and he's trying to fight the tide because a bunch of people that he's probably done dirty are going to be coming out the woodworks. Yeah. So we're very proud of you. You're very strong to go over there like that. And you had great intentions and it was a learning lesson. You know, and uh, we're glad you made it safely. Uh, we hope you get all your money back and just pursue that. Keep your foot on his neck. You say what you want to say about him. Don't watch nothing that he says about you, okay? <laughs> you just, just you say about him, and you don't watch what he say. You don't, then don't let nobody tell you. He said this about you, and he said that about you, because anybody that tells you what he said about you is your enemy. Why would I go watch him talking bad about you and say, oh, guess what, somebody? He said you this, he said you that. Yeah. So don't trust anybody that's passing you. You bad information when he's speaking bad on you when you were the one that got scammed. You were the one that didn't get proper hospitality. You the one paid him double for the apartment and he didn't even clean it up. He didn't answer the phone. He didn't do anything that a king is supposed to do. And he's in Africa claiming himself to be a king. And there's nothing kingly about nothing he's did. Nothing. So it is what it is. Uh, he'll get his. Trust me. So just stay positive. I appreciate you telling these brothers and sisters your story. It's not so much about your story. It's about them. They need to know. Yeah. So this doesn't happen to them. So you're doing great works by telling people this. And don't get upset and don't think about yourself. Think about all the people you're helping so this doesn't happen to them. Because many times, there's brothers and sisters in Africa that will scam you. But there's black Americans that go over there and they scam their own people. Mm -hmm. They go over there, they learn that you can get scammed and they become a part of the scam. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you, sis. Stay positive. We're going to stay in tune. We're going to push the music, push the music, have the baby, relax. Have the baby, enjoy the kids, enjoy your husband, enjoy the great things in life because you're alive and that's all that matters. Your family's alive, your husband's alive, your baby's alive, so that's no big deal. That's water under the bridge, okay? So we appreciate you. You have a good night and don't you get upset no more until after you had that baby, okay? <laughs> what you talk about this, because I started, I said, you know what, she's pregnant. I don't know if I want to make her talk about this, but I figured if I'd be quiet, you wouldn't get too upset. So you did a good job. You didn't get too upset. No. So I need you to be happy till you have that baby, okay? Okay. Okay, God bless you. You too. Thank you very much. And Thank stay you. strong, all right? Yeah, peace. All right, power. So there you have it. I'm going to refrain from what I got to say. She said enough. But it is redemption for me because when I first seen him in Burkina Faso, I told y'all it was nonsense. I told you. I told you. I knew from the very beginning, you know, and you can follow her. Go check her out on Samira TV, right? And contact her on Samira TV. So Myra TV. So I'm not going to say too much about him because he don't want these problems. He don't want these problems. And because he's got problems here in the U.S. anyway. And, and you know, 
he can't sit still over here either. You know, I got word on the street. You know what I'm saying? So he's running back and forth for people not too happy about him in Africa or in the United States. So, you know, it was all garbage in the first place. You cannot buy land in Africa. And he charged us just to double. He didn't have the decency enough to meet her or to call her to see, you there yet? You here yet? Nothing. He didn't have the decency enough. He got her money, didn't clean up the apartment, didn't do nothing, just took her money, charged her double. I don't care about him being, I don't got time for it. I don't got time for, for that. I don't got time for him, you know? He's a he's a case. You'll catch you'll catch a case with people like that. You know, you'll end up in jail messing with him. You know what I'm saying? If he was on a corner, I wouldn't go on that corner. I stay far away from people like that. Because it ain't gonna do me no good, it's just a loss. I let him, you know, let him find out the hard way. It's a lot to it. You know what I'm saying? One thing about when you're outside, you can smell bull crap. You know, I knew he was full of it as soon as I seen him. I followed him. I watched him about four or five episodes. I unfollowed him. Ah, this guy, this guy's full of it. You know what I mean? Is he a ticking time bomb? No. He's uh, he's a game uh, that's in the fourth quarter, and the clock's about to expire on him. <laughs> he ain't no ticking time bomb. His time finna run out. He's not a bomb at all. And so, uh, you know, let me see if I can find a channel. Hold on. I'll find a channel for you. And, you know, that's how it is. Hey. Y'all know what it is. Here's the sister's channel, follow her channel, support her music. Yeah, I know T-Love, and I know the whole story. Like I said, he doesn't want these problems. You know, nah, this, I'm out of his league. They get real ugly, real fast. We don't do threats. I'm from Chicago. We don't do threats. We take care of business. So that's why I'm staying out of it. I don't got, you know, I'm not jumping in it. I don't go back and forth on the internet. I don't care what he say or none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't got time for foolishness. I don't mix up with people like that. I just want the sister to tell her story. That's why I didn't really say much. I really wanted to say a lot. I wanted to drag him, but hey. You know what it is. You already know what it is. Now, I'm not, I don't get involved with people like that. You don't live to be 65, 70, 80, getting involved with just any old weirdo stuff. What you learn is if somebody's not living right, all you do is don't stand next to them. So all I would do with him is just don't stand next to him. You know, that's all. That's all I got to say to him is don't stand next to me. Go stand over there because you're hot. Boy, you're hot. You know, <clears throat> you're hot. You know what I mean? 
you're hot. You know, I know what the husband is thinking. And y'all know what the husband is thinking. Y'all know what the husband is thinking. If that was your wife, what would you be thinking? Gonna happen if you run into a dude or you could find dude. You're on the phone letting all the guys know, find dude. You know what it is. He's hot as a firecracker. The man ain't gonna let you disrespect his wife like that. It's making him look bad. Everybody like, well, why he wasn't there with his wife? See, but he was he expecting JT to hold her down. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're gonna get you you know, it is what it is. Negative story. I just wanted you all to hear it. Ash. Y'all know what's up with him. You got to be able to spot him. You know how it is. That's what's going on. So just don't go over there. Everyone is bad in this situation. You can't buy land in Africa. Ghana's a scam. Kenya's a scam. Burkina's a scam. Back to Africa is a scam. You cannot own land in Africa. All land in Africa is tribal. The only people that can own land in Africa is people with a military to take it. United States, France. They the ones can own land because they go and they take it with military. Land in Africa has to be taken with military might. Other than that, it has to be colonized. Other than that, you cannot buy ancestral land. You can lease it. Even the Africans, if it's not their ancestral land, they can lease it for 100 years. You can only lease it for 50 years. Basically, that's why I said if I go to Africa, I gotta have them things. And I told the chief, "Shut up! This is my land now. Back up, back up." Pop, pop. I told you, back up. You know, <laughs> I'll go take my land. I'll go take some land. So I, you know, I can't go because I'll go take some land. Matter of fact, I might round all the chiefs up, put them in jail, and say we chief over here now. I wouldn't have no problem. Popping chief. Say, I'm chief now. Shut up. You know what I mean? He said, well, I'm a Shante chief. I'm like, boy, Shante is a singer in, in, in America. Shut up. You know what I mean? Shante doing the tour with Nelly right now. Shut up, punk. You know what I mean? So I can't go to Africa because I'm not honoring shit. Oh, no, this, I'm not honoring no rules. That's why I don't want to go. I'm not honoring none of that shit. I'm not going to Africa asking the chief a goddamn thing. I'll knock a chief down. I'm chief now. Boy, I might have been chief when you sold me, boy. How I know you're the original chief when you sold us. Boy, boy, listen. So I can't go. I can't go to Africa. I can't go to Africa. I'm too gangster, too militant. I'm taking everything. Hey, come here, Chanti, Chanti Chief. Come here, that's some nice chains. Okay, run them, run them. Take them chains off, put them on my neck. Okay, do the king dance. Uh, who the king? Who the king? Me, right? All right, I'm the chief now. <laughs> you know, I'm chief. What do you want us to call you? Call me Big Daddy Woo Woo. What do you think? I'm not honoring shit. I'm not going back to Africa begging. I'm going to go take mine. Boy, shut up. Give me them cannons. Point them at the, the slave castle. Okay, blow that shit up. I blow the slave castles up. 
push all the bricks into the ocean on oh, my soul. I don't want to see no castle where you sold me. Line all the Africans over here by this castle up. Y'all great, 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 great grandmamas and granddaddy sold me, huh? Okay. Tie their faces up, blindfold them, put a cigarette in their mouth. Ready. Aim. <laughs> I'm crazy, so I can't go. That's why I can't go to Africa. You know what I'm saying? Can't go. I can't go because I'm not trying to listen to nobody. I'm not trying to listen to no African tell me shit. Boy, shut up. Okay? They so said, you are in Ghana. No. No, this is not Ghana no more. This area right here, this is Chicago East. Boy, boy. Yeah, I named this Chicago. This is Chicago, Ghana. Boy, this is Chicago. We go by Chicago rule. Now, you could be on the team or you could be an op. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just say I'm a gorilla in a fucking coop. In a fucking zoo. I don't know. You don't know me. Run, nigga. Run from the pump, nigga. Guess what I smoke. I can't go over there taking no orders from nobody, boy. The way we've been treated around this world. Black Americans got to go take it ours. You're not finna go beg nobody for something that was ours originally anyway. What? So I can't even do it. I know if I went over there and boy, boy would have played my money, he would have been JT because I would have knocked a bigger figure down. <laughs> it just would have been JT left. I'd have knocked a bigger figure off a of dude. I do run my bread, boy. Boy, you come over here playing, boy. Boy, this I couldn't play with dude. I I got PTSD. I would have never played with dude. As soon as I went and he opened the door and said, I'm taking the shower, kick the door and pow, lay down. Wife too, lay down. Search her. Get a gun. Shut up, lady. We ain't gonna hurt you. Put my foot on his neck. Boy, where my money at? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep squeezing on your neck. I wouldn't have been playing with boy, boy like that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I ain't taking no shit from the white man over here either. If it was up to me, you know I would do them. Same way. Shut up, boy. I don't know. I live on Chicago, in Chicago, so they don't tell us nothing in Chicago. I don't know where y'all live at. We don't got Ku Klux Klans and shit. We just got niggas, you know what I mean? It's quiet around here. You know what I'm saying? White people don't tell us shit in Chicago. I don't know if you ever been here before. <laughs> it's blackity black. You tell me what? We don't got Karens. I ain't never met a Karen in Chicago. I ain't never met a Karen. Karens, you know. Karens is scared of Debbies and Jackies. You know, we got Jackies. Jackie is on 10. Karen don't want no smoke with Jackie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jackie, Jackie and Debbie and Latanya, you know what I mean? And Sheila, they be on one. And Karen is no match for Sheila and Jackie and Latanya and them. And Debbie and them. There's up, you know what I mean? These sisters here, boy, I do a Karen dirty. <laughs> really? I swear to God. Oh, boy. I love to see a Karen play with a shy Rocky chick. I like to see that. You just going to be ringed because they're going to knock the care off your shit. We don't got Karens. I ain't never met one. 
Y'all got Karens in Philly? I don't think they got Karens in Philly. <laughs> hey, hey stream me, me to TV. Y'all ain't got no Karens, do y'all? They ain't got no Karens in Philly either. They don't got no Karens in Philly. I swear to God, they ain't got no Karens in Philly. I swear to God. Karens ain't everywhere. Where you from, Archie? Archie from Milwaukee. Archie, Archie from Minnesota. <laughs> Talk about Karens is everywhere. Bro, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. Where you from, Archie? Where you live at? The way you live. You from New York City? Ah, you an immigrant country. Y'all immigrant land. Y'all ain't black. Y'all ain't black. We don't get we don't got no China Mac down here. We don't got no China Mac down here talking crazy like up there. He talking crazy to y'all. Y'all got China Macs up there. Y'all soft up there in New York. Immigrant country. I've been up there. You're on the coast. You know, this the heartland. Y'all ain't y'all don't got it like Detroit, Chicago, like that. Y'all immigrant. Y'all got them Jewish dudes up there punking y'all. Got whole big Jewish turfs and all that. They be up there punking y'all up there and then why? And why and why not black like the rack? Yeah, and why not black like the rack? We blacker than y'all. Y'all international. You know what I mean? Y'all international. So yeah, you got Karens up in New York. We don't got no Karens in the rack. None. Show me one. It's the internet. Go show me a Karen in the rack. I'd love to see it. I ain't ever met one. I was born in 1958. I ain't never met no Karen up here. I don't know. All the Karens here is black. The only Karen we got is Karen Jones. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the only Karen we got is Karen Jones. Okay? Karen Jones, it hit different. It hit different with Karen Jones. See, we got the black Karen. We don't got the other Karen. And our Karens ain't caring. You know, our Karens don't care. Yeah, Harvey, we don't got no Karens in Harvey. We don't have no Karens in Maywood. We don't have no Karens on the west side. We don't have no Karens on the low end. We don't got no Karens in the wild hundreds. We don't got no Karens in Inglewood. I ain't never seen none, unless they GDs. So I don't know. Because Chicago black from downtown for as usual till you leave the city and then it's still black. It's black in the mug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, we don't got carriage. You know, we're not here. I mean, if a white dude talked crazy to me, I would show video. I'd be shocked first. It'd take me a little while to want to get at him. I'd just be like, oh, I can't believe it. Give me most of my camera. It's a white dude talking crazy in Chicago. Say it again. Say some crazy stuff. Hurry up, I'll whoop you. Hurry up, I'll whoop you. I got to get this. I'm going to whoop you as soon as I get to go. I'll be in shock. I can't believe it. Y'all remember when the Trump people came here? What happened to them? <laughs> they got beat up and chased into a garage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't do Trump. You know what I'm saying? And Chicago is MCWA. It's not MAGA. It's not MAGA in Chicago. That's not they chant. They chant is MCWA. Make Chicago white again. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what they wish. That's all they can chat in their house. Please make Chicago white again. You know? Nah, white dude talking crazy in direct. 
Now he ain't with nothing. The last white dude was talking crazy in Iraq was down at uh, Grand Park before the pandemic. What happened to him? He got shot in the head. He got killed. <laughs> he was from Indiana. He got shot in the shot. He was on the bike. Popped him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hell no. No. This is a city where they talk crazy to the police. Chicago, they be telling the white police, get your bitch ass at the car. No, get the bitch ass at the car. I bet you won't get at the car, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. The police don't play with us like that. Like, police don't play with us like that. You know what I mean? Not here. Oh, hell no. The guys don't play with us in the county jail. They don't play with us in none of the penitentiaries around here. Except maybe Menard. You go to Menard, there might be some Ku Klux Klan. That's it. JT, the bigger figure. Well, lesson learned. Don't go give your money to nobody. Go to Africa. They're running mad scams everywhere. Don't let nobody scam you. Okay. I remember E.B. Benz. He was outside, and then he was in the trunk. You know? He was outside, and he ended up from outside in the trunk. Yeah, he tried. He tried. Uh, and that's a shame. I feel sorry for the sister, though. But she made it. She's got another baby on the way. It's a beautiful thing. And I hope she stopped watching, dude. And I just had her come over here just so y'all would know. Don't uh, don't invest your money trying to go to Africa. You're going to lose your money. From the very beginning, Archie, I told everybody he was a scam man. I said, y'all, he's a scam man. He's over there with his Muslim rug in Burkina because he know the Muslims might invade because you got the you got the jihadists over there in West Africa. And that's why he's got the Muslim rug in case they invade because they are uh, killing people in Mali, Burkina, Nigeria. You got the Islamic terrorists. So I seen him with his rug, his little prayer rug. So if you over there with him, and the Islamic terrorists invade over there in West Africa. He'll take out his rug and turn Muslim. And you'll be over there, the black American Christian or Negro, and you'll get killed, and he'll be Asalaamu Alaikum his way out of the situation. He'll turn on you. You know what I'm saying? You know, do, you know, you know a snake when you see one, you know, allegedly. I'm not going to say a snake. I'm just going to say allegedly. People say he's a snake. I don't know. But people say he ain't shit and he's a scam artist. I don't know. I don't like him. I wouldn't give him a quarter. If I was around him, he was like, yeah, Pharaoh, I could sell you some land. I'd be like, eh, now what you could do is put your hands up. Run your pockets. Run your pockets. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do on my soul. Run your pocket. Shut it up. Before you just be T, the bigger. Because I'm going to knock the J off your shit if you don't shut up, bro. You know what I'm saying? On my soul. You smell fishy. You know what I'm saying? Talking too fast. You know what I'm saying? Bouncing all around, you know? Yeah, he's a, he, you know, allegedly, he's a snake. People say he's a snake. I don't know. Now you got to protect yourself from this internet. People say he's a low-down, rotten, stinking snake. I don't know. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> I'm sure he did. I'm sure. That's what he do. The whole world's looking for him. He ain't no good. His cousin was copping a plea. 
man, I'm sorry, sisters. I didn't mean to go over there and say the black women ain't nothing. That's got you back home because he scams you too. Now you back copping, please. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you ain't going to never see me go nowhere talking down on black Americans. Boy, what? Boy, listen. You ain't going to never see me go no other country and talk down on black Americans. That ain't going to happen. You'll never see me in Africa talking down black American women. Boy, what? What? His cousin filed too. He, you can't trust him. The fact he did that with the sister in the jail and he went over there talking down on black American women in front of them Africans. See? And then he come back to America. He's supposed to be lined up. You know what I mean? Come here, boy. Why are you over there talking crazy about the homies and the homegirls? Oh, you know, I apologize. Nah, we don't want to hear that. He was a snake, allegedly. I love African women, too. But I could praise African women and black. I don't. You don't got to put nobody down to lift nobody else up. I don't got to go over there just because I want to holler at an African woman. I don't have to down a black American woman to holler at an African woman. This whole thing where you got to put one down to lift the other one, we're not doing that. I'm not going to down no African woman to uplift no black American woman. I'm not going to down no black American woman to uplift no African. I'm not going to down no Caribbean sister to uplift the other one. I'm not doing all that. They all sisters. Not to mention, I'll fuck all of them. So what I look like? You know what I mean? They all could get the D. So I ain't going to be phony. You know, I'll knock back an African. I'll knock back a Caribbean. I'll knock back a sister. So it's all even Steven with me. You know, it's all good pussy. <laughs> I don't know. I believe they all got some good pussy. I don't know. I believe every black woman in the world got some good pussy. That's what I believe. I don't know. I'm not going to say you better than her. Come on. If anything, I'm going to try you. Oh, yeah, you pop it. I'm going to try her. Oh, yeah, you pop it. I don't know which one is the best. Let me do it again. <laughs> it might be you. No, it might be you. No, it might be you. <laughs> it might be you. It's a tie. <laughs> you know what I'm it's definitely going to be a tie. Okay. Uh, we're going to get to singing the staple singers. Let's do it again, again, do it again. I'm not going to, I don't do all that. I love them all. I'm not going to get over there. Yeah, black American women ain't nothing. You know what that's like? If I go to Africa and say black American women ain't nothing, you know what I'm really saying? My mama ain't shit, <laughs> right? This nigga went over there and said his mama wasn't shit because his mama's a black boy. What? Bro, you went over there and told him your mama wasn't shit? He forgot his mama was a black American woman. He went over there. I love African women. Y'all better than my mama. My mama and my sister and my female cousins ain't shit. That's basically... <laughs> That's basically what he did. He dissed his females in his own family. Boy, put your face on the screen. What? You know? What I look like this is black American women and my mama's a black American woman. And my auntie. And my daughters. And my sister. What? What? This is what happened when you try to diss a group and forget you a part of the damn group. You try to diss black American women to forgot your mama one. (sighs) 
you know, I ain't finna lift one black person up. Like, I wouldn't go to Africa putting down black Africans. Like, these black Africans say, no, I don't really do all that. Now, if you're acting funky, I'm going to say you're acting funky. You know, if I'm in Chicago and niggas is robbing and shit, I'm going to be like, these y'all niggas is robbing and shit. But I'm just dealing with the individual robbers and stuff or individual funky people. I'm not going to say all Africans, all black Americans is gangbang. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to generalize the whole group of blacks like every black African ain't the same. Every black American is not the same. You can't say black Americans. That's crazy as hell. Imagine a black American and a black American carjack you and somebody say all black Americans is the same. And you're like, no, I am not the same as the nigga that carjacked me. What? 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 We be generalizing too much. I wish I would. I'm not going to go over there pandering. Yeah. Black people got to get it together, you know? We got to get more militant, more, get our mind more focused. You know, but you can't go to Africa if you ain't got no money. So I'm gonna let y'all go, but you gotta get money. You gotta get money over here and have some income coming in. And then you go to Africa, that income coming in is increasing over there. But once you make so much money over there, you're gonna become us and a them and you're gonna be in danger. Cause it's the same way over here. If you start getting money, people wanna rob you, don't they? People want to break in your house. People want to steal your car. What make you think it's any different in Africa? You go over there and start doing good. People want to do something to you. This is a world problem. Anytime you're doing good, you create enemies. Robbers start looking at you. Kidnappers, extortionists, anywhere. So it doesn't change. So if you go to Africa and start doing good, it's going to be haters. Or you're going to be out of your element so you can't protect yourself. If you're in America, you kind of know the haters. You kind of know to get an ADT system, get some Rottweilers, you know, to secure your house. We kind of, you know, if you're smart, you kind of know how to avoid a carjacking and all of this. You know, those of us that got sense, we don't go to the gas station 9, 10 o'clock at night. We gas up 9 in the morning, 12, mid, you know, noon, 1 in the middle of the day. We don't be out there moving when the goonie goons wake up and come outside. We kind of learn how to function. So, you know, much respect to all the brothers and sisters in Africa. From what I understand, the people in Africa didn't like JT. They tell him, yeah, he ain't no good. He did you dirty. You know what I mean? The brothers and sisters in Africa were siding with the sister. The police went and grabbed dude and locked him up and said, yeah, he ain't no good. Come on, we're going to lock him up. He can't come over here scamming y'all, scamming you like that. So much respect to the police in Kenya that went and took care of business and didn't show no favoritism and went and got that boy and locked him up. You know what I'm saying? He bogus as hell if he over there. If, if he over there scamming black Americans, he bogus. Straight up, I swear to God, if he over there and black Americans come over and he's scamming them, he fouled his hell. He shouldn't be allowed to touch back on the soil unless he sneak in and sneak out. Boy, you can't do us dirty like that, boy. Crazy. So listen, I hope y'all enjoyed that interview. It was a good interview. You know, go support the sister. And JT, if you're watching... Man, get your shit together. You know what I'm saying? For you end up with a shit bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, ain't nobody playing with you. Clean it up, bro. Make amends. Clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all stay strong. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what we own over here, right? You know what time we own. Man, we own that reparation. You see what we are, victory.